Coming up in this episode of Finding Common Ground. People died. Our country was on the brink of being overthrown, well, not by an enemy, but by us. How do, you, how do you feel as a black man with the Confederate flag for the first time went through the Capitol? It's hard trying to be big when small gets you. Mm-hmm. There are two sides to every coin. How do we deal with racial issues when they affect relationships? Finding common ground on all those issues that we come against. There's black and there's white. And I think as Christians, we have to learn how to get together because we're not in heaven. I've met more interesting people just by God just bringing them in. Republicans and Democrats. But a lot of times when it comes to race and it comes to culture and it comes to perception, even as Christians, we don't always understand. We look at it through our lenses. There's Bill. I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland called Parma. Uh, Any was the, black people in Parma? There was not one. Not one black person, not Bill? Not one. Come not on, Bill, one. you got to have one, a, a nope. token black person, a token. And there's Odell. I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, public housing, single mom, divorced single mom with four kids, and I came up through segregation and all that kind of stuff. If a black person drove through the town, the police would stop and escort them out. Bill and Odell are finding common ground. A part of what we have to do is listen to each other, find the common ground, and question, not questioning you like you're on a witness stand, but questioning you for a better understanding. Father God, we just come to you today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God, with everything going on in my life personally and everything going on in the country, I want to go and say a prayer that you've heard many times from my Geechee Gullah ancestors, those who came out of slavery, God. And the prayer was simple. You know what I done, Yafa? I ain't got to tell you. And the interpretation is that for others is that, God, you know why I'm down here on my knees. You know the reason. I do not need to tell you. So God, in honor of my ancestors, in all the struggles and trials and they had to deal with. You know what I done, Yafa? I ain't got to tell you. Amen. Amen. Dearly Father, just uh, thank you for uh, the events of the last couple of weeks, the couple of months at the school board. Uh, yeah, we know your hands and everything. And uh, thank you for uh, giving me the peace that as we go through this, this particular situation. Uh, Lord, lift up our family. Uh, we're traveling out of state this weekend and uh we uh ask for safety as dory and i travel and we lift up uh, our daughter elise k who's going to be moving to cleveland the end of the month and uh that uh we uh give her safety as she travels up there and gets a house and gets settled with her dog and her horse and gets time with our family up there and lord let her survive the uh, first winter amen and lord let her survive the first winter that's interesting bill guess what with everything going on, do you remember this show called The Young and the Restless? I think it first aired on March 26, 1973. Now, I was I was 13 years old then, and they had this dude on there, Bill, called Victor Newman. And Victor had his wife called Nikki. And, you know, Victor was a powerful guy, he ran Newman Enterprise. Now, white people called it soap opera. Black people called the stories. We had to go catch the stories. And I remember years later, you go there and you catch it. And it's like you never missed anything. Victor being Victor. Have you ever heard of The Young and Restless, Bill? I have. And, you know, I'd never watched it, you know, but I, I never understood soap operas because in 30 minutes, they could have more drama <laughs> in their life than a lifetime. Now, now that I've been going through the school board issue, I think maybe we had to make a soap opera that The Young and Restless with the Republicans and Democrats. Well, no, 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 don't put the Democrats in there now. A lot of this is going on, the drama, the soap opera, the stories. Well, I guess Democrats kind of in there too, because I, you know, yeah, you're right. You're right, Bill, you're right. Look at everybody in there, you know, the whole kitchen sink. Guilford County School Board. Drama. Drama, mama, drama. Yeah, there yeah, we, had, we had to do a soap opera on that. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when I grew up in South Carolina, poor black boy from the dirt roads of Charleston, South Carolina. We used to say this thing, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But, you know, Bill, I don't know 
that sounds good, but words do hurt. And sometimes when small minded people rise to big jobs, they think they're okay. However, it's hard trying to be big when small get you. Mm -hmm. It's hard trying to be big when small got you. And I was sitting there, you know, it's, it's college football. I mean, you know, your Ohio, no, excuse me, the Ohio State University Buckeyes. But I was looking at that helmet, Bill, and I saw a little plant on the helmet that looked like a marijuana leaf. What are y'all doing up in Ohio? Y'all getting high. What's that little leaf, Bill? Hey, we need another income source up there. <laughs> <laughs> Legalize it, put it on a football helmet. It does look like a marijuana leaf, but it's not. It's a buckeye from a buckeye tree that grow in Ohio. And uh, the uh, buckeye looks like a, it's a nut and it's kind of like a chestnut. Looks like a chestnut okay. down here. Like chestnuts roasting over open yeah, fire. Supposedly you can eat a buckeye, but I have never had one. <laughs> okay. uh, but they do have them in chocolate. So I've had those. Let me ask you a question. College football. Big time. Everybody loves college. Everybody loves football. I think the Ohio State University Stadium is called the Horseshoe. Mm -hmm. And then you have Michigan. How many people fit in the Horseshoe and how many people fit in Michigan? Michigan. Which one's larger? Uh, Michigan's larger. I think uh, it's about 110,000. 110,000 people coming to a football game to see what yeah and that's just in the stadium there's probably another hundred thousand outside the stadium like at ohio state it holds over a hundred thousand we went there and we did the outside and they have big screens set up with bleachers and there's probably another 50 or sixty thousand watching it on the game i mean on the game and you you can hear the roar from the stadium in fact the geology department put seismic meters around the stadium when they had the Michigan Ohio state game. Wow. And it registered like five on the Richter scale, like an, like an earthquake. So bill all the money, college football is a big deal. Oh man. College football is entertainment. Yep. We all get excited, tailgating people pay all kind of money, but they got a new player. Now, bill, they got a new player on the scene that's coming in there, just messing stuff up he's coming in there and i think they call him prime time have you ever heard of prime time i think now they call him prime prime time is back baby black is back black is back Deion sanders you know you were talking about the young and restless earlier i know who would play you okay who who? Deion sanders (laughs) prime you're prime man i know who would play me he's dead now john wayne (laughs) oh lord (laughs) Oh, man. I think you know something about Dion. What, what can you tell us about Dion I was, Sanders? I, you know, he won that game and he predicted it. It was kind of like Muhammad Ali. I'm going to knock him out in the third round. I'm going to stink, float like a butterfly sting. Dion's got a lot of that in him. And uh, so I was on Facebook and up comes this. You on Facebook? Yeah, I get on there once in a while. But they attack you on Facebook. I know. I, I do that when I want to feel good. I just go there with <laughs> masochistic and say, <laughs> Let's see what they're saying about little Billy today. And, uh, you know, if my mom was alive, I'd just sing my mom on him. There you go. There you go. A, so anyhow, this this came up. This came up from Dion talking about the press was giving him a hard time, you know, because like, they were unranked. Yeah. And they beat a ranked team. So here's what he said. I'm going to play, play it for our folks. Okay. And uh, it's really cool. What about me would make you think that I care about your opinion of me? <laughs> Your opinion of me is not the opinion that I have of myself. You ain't make me, so you can't break me. You didn't build me, so you can't kill me. I, I, you know what? God God established me, so you ain't nothing you can do to me. I've been him. I've been a difference maker, a game changer. I've been that guy. So what would change? Not a darn thing. I'm not even playing the game, and you got an opinion of me. I love it, but I don't care. And I wish the world thought like that. Youngsters, if you're out there right now, do not give a darn what opinion people have of you. Long as that opinion is not consistent of that of yourself, you be you. I'm not paying to make you feel good about me. I already feel good about me. I'm good. Message for the youngsters out there and the old, old school, not old fools. Look at me. So that's that's him. And I, I heard that and I go, holy cow. I got to memorize that. That is cool because that's how I feel about all these people coming after me for the school board. Wow. Wow. You didn't make me. You can't break me. You didn't kill me. God made me. I'm good with me. 
I'm comfortable with me. Your opinion of me does not matter one bit because I have a good opinion of myself. And you can blow all the noise you want. Not going to hurt me. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Wow. You know what? I don't even know what to say. And very rarely in my speechless. So, Bill, a message to the old school, not the old fools. That's what Dion is saying. And Dion got under so much criticism for saying, here's an arrogant black man. And Dion's like, no, that's not true. What I'm trying to say is that everyone tried to beat me up with their words. I can't do this. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough at the HBCUs. For those who don't know, HBCU stand for Historical Black College and Universities. It's almost like the small colleges and Deion Sanders got an opportunity there. Jackson State did very well and finally got another opportunity with uh, Colorado. Now Colorado, what Bill spoke of early in University of Colorado, went from winning one game last year with Holly not that much following to now they won one game so far this year, upset number, I think it's 17, TCU, who played for the national championship last year. And now all of a sudden, Deion Sanders and the Colorado University of Colorado Buffaloes is number two in the country and the hottest team in the country and one of the most expensive tickets. They're playing the University of Nebraska this coming Saturday. And from what is being reported, man, everything is sold out. One thing that came in the 2024 NFL draft, talking about Colorado QB, Shador Sanders has millions of reasons to stay in school. This is uh, Dion's son, if you're not following it. And right now he's making a point, 3.8 million in NIL deals, name, images, and likeness. So he's making a point, $3.8 million while he's in school. And report says that he's making more than the base salary of several NFL quarterbacks, such as Joe Burrows and Dak Prescott. And so it's like, you know, why would he leave college? And those people who say, you know, college players shouldn't get paid. You know, I disagree with that. I was a college player and I know what that's all about. And that's one of the things that me and my good friend, Congressman Mark Walker, agreed on. And he was a big help on getting that bill passed. But back to the quarterback, because many people said a black coach is not smart enough to compete at the upper level. Many people say a black quarterback bill is not smart enough to play at that level because at that level is a thinking man's game. Well, Dion is saying if he had the opportunity, if he had the same tools, meaning that a nice facility, a nice place to train, a nice training table, then he could get the premier players who come. And, you know, you talked about words. It's interesting. Dion words can be offensive to some and, exciting to others, much like President Donald Trump words can excite some and be offensive to others. But something I heard, Bill, is a rumor that Jerry Jones, the president of Dallas Cowboys and the owner of the Cowboys, may be looking at Deion Sanders to be the head coach of the Cowboys if things keep going great for Deion and things don't keep going well for the Cowboys coach. So all that was kind of funny to me. But speaking of words, our good friend, I saw a tweet from our good friend, Congressman Mark Walker, who's running for governor. And I don't have it in front of me, but it said something like, if I'm elected, I will ban the mask mandates. And I thought about it. Then it's like later for all the BS. And I don't know what BS meant, but he said later for all the BS, we could do it right now with the House and the Senate. We could go ahead and make that happen now, even before I become governor. What do you think about words, Bill? What do you think our good friend, Congressman Mark Walker, who's running for governor, and I know he has to throw out some red meat every now and then. What do you think about Deion Sanders' words, when many people say arrogant black man? What do you think about President Donald Trump's words? Because, you know, sticks and stones will break the bones. But, you know, everybody's not hardcore like you, Bill, where words not hurt you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. In politics, you know, you've got to do these sensational things to get the news to pick you up. And if you're not, I don't know. I see you on the news all the time. I mean, every day you on my feed, my brother. I know. Uh, I'm trying to get off your feet. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Uh, but, you know, what people are drawn to is 
I think individuals that are genuine mm. and speak from the heart and want to do the right thing. Right. You know, okay. They don't want to just throw bombs. They want to work together and try and work together and try and get things accomplished. And I know that's not fancy or sexy or gives anybody, oh man, that's, but if you talk to the average American, they want the government to function and get things done. Right. And talking about kids making $3 million. Yeah. Boy, we could certainly use that for school teachers. Okay. We could certainly (laughs) use that money for, you know, I was, I went and visited our maintenance department. Yes. I got a call and they wanted me to come over and see them. So I went over and there's 60 maintenance people and, you know, they had some legitimate concerns. We have 13 million square feet of roofing. Mm. You know how big our roofing department is? How big? Two people. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. yeah. It used to be more. Wow. It's two people. So, but know, but wait a minute, Bill. If the roof, everybody, any and everybody know that if the roof leaks, it's all kind of issues. You have to make sure that's even I know that. Yeah. Even so, I know that. Well, what's happened over the years is because the budgets weren't right, you know, you have to cut money someplace. Wow. And so where do they cut? They cut maintenance and preventive maintenance and people in maintenance. They didn't replace them to keep the school teachers around because they're the ones. And so, and hoping that, you know, the roof didn't leak and the air conditioning worked and you could get away with that short term and business right. people do the right. same thing. Right. Well, the plant managers will run it machine till it dies. It's not a good way to go. But if I know I'm going to be there for two years as a plant manager or five years, and I know I can run this machine without spending money on maintenance for 10 years, then I'm going to take that money and drop it to the bottom line. And it's going to make me look good as a plant manager. But everybody's going to say, Bill, you did a great job. You did a great job. But the bottom line is in the long run, you're not being true to everybody else because your numbers look great, but you're violating the local, the principles of maintenance yeah. and all the Give other things example. that you need. You got a car, you drive down to Charleston a lot. Yes, I do. The idiot light comes on. You're right. Gonna, you're going to go, I'm going to ignore that and keep driving. No, nah, no. Nah, when the check engine light comes on, that's that gives me as much, not quite, but as much as concern as when the blue light comes on and I'm getting pulled over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Different feeling, but different it, feeling, yeah. different feeling. Yeah. But my point is that you are recognized that you have to maintain your car. Yes. You know, the brakes squeak, you're going to get them fixed. Right. There's a sound coming from your engine. You're going to get it looked at. Well, if you don't have the money to do that, what are you going to do? But school boards, you all help determine the budget, right? No, we get the budget from the federal government, from the state, and from the local. And if they don't fund us enough for what we need, we can't do the things we need to do. Like, for example, our uh, security systems were antiquated. Oh, wait now, a minute. Now the county gave us a lot of money, and we're putting like close to 7,500 new cameras in, state-of-the-art cameras. Right. We're upgrading the ones on the buses. Right. The state-of-the-art. We put in new systems for people to walk through. Entry to school, we caught a kid with two guns. On the first day? First day. Wow. It's bad that you caught him, but it's great that you caught him. Yeah. And let me explain. People like Odell, da da da, because everybody know I'm a real big fan of, you know, the Second Amendment, of course. But at the same time, it's good that you caught the person it's bad that the individual made a bad decision to bring a weapon on school campus. Yeah, and they were stolen weapons. Wow. I mean, this perk guy, he's in trouble. So we're doing a lot of things because now we've got the funds to do it. We've got two things that are working. One is the management team we have that Whitney Oakley's put together and the people yeah, underneath. You brag about her a lot. Oh, she what is. About her? What is it about her? You, you, you know, you don't brag on people, but you just think that she's the cat's meow. Yeah, she's got the right temperament. She can deal with, I mean, there's a lot of issues that go on. She's on 24-7 call for wow. issues. And she's raising a family as well. She's a mom and a wife. So, you know, she's, she's a superstar. She really is. So in Guilford County, and I, my kids all went to public schools, of course, I think Superintendent Oakley came behind the last superintendent, so it was a good succession plan. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. What does the school board actually? What do you all do? What do you What do you all do? Are you Are you all her boss? How does it work? You know, I still don't know yet. 
I'm still figuring that out. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I do know. For those listening that are going to put it on Facebook, make sure you spell it right. See, uh, the, uh, spell what? what? What did they need to spell? Bill, Bill said he didn't know what he was doing. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> and, got it. Uh, but uh, we oversee the superintendent and the budgets. In the school bond, a billion, two billion dollar school bond, we oversee two that. billion dollars of my tax money. Uh, no, it's a bond. So oh, you, it's you, a bond. bond. Yeah, you didn't. The way the money it's being funded is through the lottery. Okay, so it's through gambling. Oh yeah, and uh, gambling definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so it's being funded through the lottery. Wow. Yeah. Who would have thunk it, like yeah. we say in South Carolina? Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Well, it probably would never have passed if they didn't do it that way. Wow. They leveraged it. It was interesting. When the lottery was set up, it was originally set up by the legislature to be an additional funds for the schools. Uh-huh. Well, at the last minute, the legislature changed that, so that clause isn't in there. Not the good old North Carolina legislation. Not 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 the good folk we know. You know, it's interesting, as long as we've been around – I'm starting to know a lot of these players who I see on TV and read about in the news, but I know them personally. And Bill, the thing about it, and I'm going to stand by what I'm getting ready to say, these are good people. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot they of are. these folks who they you are. read about in the yep. name and people are like, Odell, do you know him? I said, yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He's a in a very tight situation right now. And I've watched people who are normally – good people be in positions where people are barking at them and kind of paint them in a corner. It's interesting. It's just interesting to watch people. How do you serve, Bill, without losing your soul? You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day. When you go into public office, suddenly people think they have the right to be ugly to you. Mm. And why is explain ugly? Because ugly could be looks, ugly could be behavior, ugly could be words. Those same sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. What does ugly mean, Bill? It means when you're high school or in middle school, did you ever see a bully? Yes, I was bullied. Yes, I was bullied. Me too. And, you know, they call you names. Yeah. You know, my name, because it was Goble, they call me Gobble Gobble. It's not funny, when but the way you said it, and the <laughs> thing about it is you can recall that just like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I probably did the same thing to some other kids. I mean, yeah. you know, we all did it. Not that it's right. So what happens is these adults still do that. Mm. They still call you names. They they say bad things about you. They And so you've got to have thick skin. And as Deion Sanders says, you didn't make me, so you can't break me. But- Okay, you got a little, you got a little black in you today. You covered it with a little <laughs> swagger, a little soul, Dion. You know, so Bill, do you think it's because I can hide behind my keyboard, or oh, people yeah. say in oh, a yeah. person yep. because y'all have a big old school yep. board meeting on the nineteenth of this month? You know, a lot of stuff's going on, and I always ask the question, Bill. By the way, if you're in town, come to it. It should be fun. It should be fun. Mm-hmm. Can I bring my Jiffy Pop popcorn? I'd bring as much popcorn as you want. Thank you. Now, a lot of times, Bill, we used to say maybe some Boy Scout popcorn. Some Boy get, Scout popcorn in, in the tin can. We should send it, sell it. Gotcha. Remember, it was a question once asked: Can we compete as political competitors, not political enemies? So when people are saying stuff to you, are they saying it to you as a competitor? And that's fair. You know, politics, sharp elbows, or as an enemy. Are you the enemy now? Are you the devil? Are you this hell and brimstones on you? What What are people okay. saying? Let's talk about, you asked me what the role of the school board is. Yes. The role of the school board is to first, besides being good stewards of the funds that we get, but to support the kids, make sure they've got what they need and the resources and the roof doesn't leak on them Wow! and all that. And then support the teachers. Right. So they've got what they need and then be there for the parents as we take them. And that means transporting 39,000 kids every day, twice a day. 39,000. Yep. And we haven't lost one. Wow. You know, I'm sure things were late the first couple of days getting the bus routes right, but it wasn't a major thing. So that's our role. When you look at the comments that come on Facebook, not one talks about the kids. Not one talks about parents. Not one talks about the teachers. So what do they talk about? Bill Goble has got a 
devil's tail forked. You know, wow. I mean, it, that's what they go and they hide behind their keyboard because I invite every one of them to have coffee. And why, why do you do that? Because look, I, well, I, like, I like coffee. Well, but see, you know, I'm from the hood. So sooner or later, it's like, I'm good for a minute with that. Then sooner or later, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up off of me. But that's me. That's me. That's the, the good looking slim trim black guy from the dirt roads of South Carolina. But when you start thinking about what you're talking about, Bill, people are attacking you personally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting. The people that know me know that that's not Bill Goble. And even Republicans have come up to me and said, you know, I tell the people that say that you don't know Bill Goble. You need to get to know him. He's a good guy. He's trying to do his best. But again, I've said this and I still believe this, that the Guilford County GOP, not all but some, Republicans have a fondness of having a political circular firing squad because you all don't really focus on us Democrats right now. You all are so busy fighting yourselves. <laughs> and it looked like you all enjoy fighting. You all that school board, you all enjoy it. It's like we're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to spend money. We're going to spend time. We're going to spend energy. We're just going to fight, 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 because look like you have a limited resources and time, energy and effort and finances. So when are we going to start seeing you all run against us, the Democrats? Because we're sitting on the side is like, I thought we in a race. I thought Republicans going to run against Democrats. And we sitting there saying, come on, guys, quit fighting each other. Let's race. Come on, man. Yeah, we should be working together to secure this seat for the next election. So, you know, it, it is what it is. It's it's there's a group in there that uh, is running it. And, you know, you look at fruit. If it's a group and if they're working together, what's the fruit? Yeah, Take a football, football team, Deion Sanders football team. Look at the fruit. Yeah, you're right. right. He was an underdog. And people said, you know, this is the second ranked team in the country at the time. Wow. And, uh, you know, they beat him. So look at the fruit. So what's the fruit of our Republican Party here in Guilford County? We don't have control of the county commissioners. We don't have control of the school board. We don't have control of the city council of Greensboro or the mayor. We've got it in some of the outlying communities. But overall, we we don't have much control here locally. And the other thing is, if one of the things that helps make the engine run is raising money. Uh -huh. To support candidates, you I mean you've got to buy signs. You got to, if you want to do TV or billboards, you got to do that. You got to do direct mail. There's a lot, you know. There's a lot of money involved. The local GOP cannot raise money. They cannot raise money. But I know a lot of people in the local GOP, and these guys and young ladies are very wealthy individuals. Some oh, yeah. of the ones who I know personally. Yep. yep. But maybe you all are not interested in raising money. Maybe you all are not interested in working together. Maybe you all are not interested in being a part of something. Maybe you all are more interested in blowing something up. Maybe you all are more interested in being a disruptive force. Maybe you all are more interested in, you know, at least how about the, the car line? You know, everybody complains about the car line, black people, white people, Democrats, Republicans. My daughter-in-law is complaining about the car line down in Charlotte. The car rider line when you come oh, to yeah. school. Oh, yeah. It's a big problem. Yeah. I, you know, let's I, work on those things, yeah, man. Yeah, let's work on absolutely. those things. And I got involved. I started digging in and asking, why Why do we have this problem? Well, if you look at the average age of our school in Guilford County, it's over 60 years old. So the school is as old as I am. Yeah. And wow. back you know, 30 years ago, when we started building a lot of these schools and 40 years ago, the kids, about 75% of the kids came on the bus. Right. 25% in cars. Right. It's reversed now. Mm, why? Nobody wants their kid to ride the bus for whatever reason. You got it. So, Bill, this soap opera, this young and the restless, Victor Newman, Nikki, you know, Newman Enterprise, white folks say soap operas, black people say stories. When is this going to come to an end? I mean, when is it? And I'm not talking about Guilford County School Board. I'm just talking about, I asked the last time when we talked about the Cool Kids Club, it appears to me that many in the Republican Party, you all are just angry right now. I mean, you all are angry and it's not a good look. And you're like, well, they're Democrats, you all are angry too. But look like you all are angrier than us right now. Well, you know, it, it, take just Guilford County out. Look what's happening with Trump 
you know, the guy gets indicted, I think, you know, 40 or 50 or 60 times. Yeah. And uh, his ratings go up. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, at what point are people going to say, we need a different candidate? Well, you, you have a good point there. But, you know, one of the things about President Trump is not him only. It's the people. It's us. We look in ourselves and people says. You know, people getting jail time, people getting jail time big time and saying, hey, Trump won, that trials are going on. You have Mar Logo. Uh, I think the guy name is Youssef Chavis, if I'm not mistaken. He's the IT worker, Mar Logo. So he flipped, right? And people mad, like, he can't flip, he can't flip. And I'm like, I've been black my whole life. I'm still black, right? Yeah, what I'm seeing there. Okay, good, changed. Yeah. good. Okay. Actually, you got better looking, but other thank than- you. I'm a good looking black guy now, but I've been black my whole life. The way we were raised, Bill, my great grandmother would say, be careful on who you get in a car with or who you ride with, because if one person do it, everybody in the car is going to be charged with the crime. Yep. And then this is a poor black woman from Abbeville, South Carolina, who probably didn't even finish X amount, but she knew enough. She had enough common sense street to say se- street sense, street sense, common sense. You're absolutely right. Who says, listen, be careful who you hang with. Be careful what you do, because the police will interrogate everybody in the car and says, who gun is it? Who was driving? Who did this and get somebody to flip? So flipping black folk against each other. That's normal. So what's so bad about this guy flipping against Trump saying, hey, these documents, he tried to get me to erase footage and lie and everything else. And people are like, he's a snitch. He flipped. What's going on with law abiding white folk and black folk that now if you tell the truth, folks mad because you told the truth. They're mad at him. Why are they mad at him? Because he doesn't want to take do time for President Trump. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, you know, it's like the people that say January 6th was just a group of guys going on a tour of the Capitol, or it was it was an isolated group. You know, a lot of people that were there said, I didn't see any of that. All I saw was kind of odd. There were no trash cans, uh-huh. and we didn't see a lot of police. Did they see TV? Did, did, they, did any of those TV. individuals some, ever see what happened on TV, some, or was all that fake? There was some TV, but not a lot. He said, until they started marching up to the Capitol, all the TV folk came out. Well, of course, the TV folk are going to come out because there's going to be a story. So, you know, they're saying, hey, that was planned. The FBI or the secret wow. planned it, you know. They have a conspiracy for it. That's, you know, somebody set this up to make Trump look bad. Pelosi pulled back the Capitol Police so they didn't have the support and blah, 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 blah. Bill, blah, people blah. got killed. People died. I know. People died. Our country was on the brink of being overthrown, well, not by it, enemy, but by us. How do, you, how do you feel as a black man that the Confederate flag for the first time went through the Capitol? Uh, the, the Confederate flag and me, we have a different relationship. As a black man from South Carolina, I've seen the Confederate flag my whole life. One interesting time was this. When we won the national championship in basketball, we went to the state capital of South Carolina to be honored because, you know, I had the best team in the state, better than Clemson, better than South Carolina, all that. And right next to us was the Confederate flag inside the chambers. You know, they had the South Carolina flag, the, F- the Confederate flag. This was 1982. That flag has been to the point where You looked at it like, wait a minute, this is the Ku Klux Klan flag to wait a minute. This is the good old boys who hate black people flag to wait a minute. This flag been around a long time, you know, but it's not just the Confederate flag. And I'm asking your question is the Gatson flag. Don't tread on me. Mm -hmm. The Gatson flag is from Gatson, who used to be the primary dock owner in Charleston, South Carolina where all the slave ships came in. He was a politician. I didn't know that. So it's remarkable that this politician, back to politics, had some kind of deal in the state capitol, talking about state capitals and politicians, elected officials, where all the slave ships had to dock at his place in Charleston. Now, thank God, over time, because things do change in time, that's the place where the new african-american museum is at the same place while his ancestor came in in chains bill wow so seeing that flag you didn't like it but i know that flag 
the Gatson flag. You don't like it, but I know the history of those flags. So when you talk about the flag could be heritage, not hatred, they're right. It could be heritage, but it also could be hatred. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the Gatson flag, this don't tread on me. It's just, it, it don't mean anything. These flags mean something. Mm -hmm. These flags mean something. But let me tell you what kind of disturbs me even more than the flags. And you a school board member, the burning of books, Bill. The burning of books and the banning of books, because now all of a sudden we're banning books, we're burning books. What's that all about? From a school board perspective, do you all have the right to ban certain books now? I don't know. I've never been involved in any of that. But I can tell you that if someone said we need to ban this book, I would definitely get a copy of it and go through it because wow. you just don't ban a book just because somebody said that's a bad book. Well, some people think that the Bible's a bad book if you're a Muslim. Yeah, well, you got right? a good point there. Yeah. You got a it, good point. You know, so, you know, it's just one person's opinion over another on a particular book. Now, I'm not going to support some terrible stuff that goes on a, in a book. You know, if I, it's agree. Bad. I agree. I agree. I uh, agree with that. Particularly for young people. I mean, that's you've got to protect them from some of this this stuff so they, their minds can grow appropriately. And, I agree because yeah. information. Let me ask a question. I want, I'm going to switch a little bit. Our good buddy, Mark Meadows, you know, Mark Meadows case at the time of this recording, still no energy on it hasn't been moved to federal court or not. That's going to be a big deal. So I want the audience to be paying attention to Mark Meadows charged with two things in Georgia, the violation of Georgia's anti racketeering RICO law and soliciting a public official to violate their oath. And then my good buddy, 81 year old Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, they said, hey, you know, Mitch is OK. Let him keep serving. There's nothing wrong with Mitch. There's no stroke. There's nothing, no seizures. Just let him keep on serving. And I'm like, Mitch, Mitch, how effective, Bill, as a Republican, how effective is do you think Mitch McConnell is as the leader over the Senate? Yeah. The Senate. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. Staff members do most of the work. So if he's got a good staff, it's still effective. OK. He's kind of the figurehead. But I don't know if you've ever had brain fog. I've had it at times, okay. you know, you know, like I walk out in the garage and I go, okay, why did I come out here? And then I remember, oh, I have to get a screwdriver. It's just part of growing older that, you know, your short-term memory doesn't click as much. So you think that's... And no, here's what I think. Okay, happened. okay, because I, I, I was getting ready to yeah. wait a minute, talk about two different things here. He fell. Old people fall. Okay. Okay, when I go get my annual physical, it's the first thing they ask you, have you fallen? Bill, you're not old people. I fall. I'm 63 years old. I fall. I've been falling my whole life playing sports and everything else. I fall. Yeah. We don't bounce like we did, but no, nah, we no. don't bounce. Now nah, I, I can sit the TV watching basketball players and football players and they get hit or they fall and I can feel it sitting on the couch. Oh like, Ooh, yeah. Ouch, yeah. ouch, ouch. Yeah. I'd be still staying there. Yes. So he fell and he had a major concussion. Well, look at the football players when they get major concussion. Yep. They take them out. Right. 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 Con concussion protocol. Right. We don't do that with politicians. We let them keep going. And I had a Medal of Honor recipient one time, good friend of mine, and uh, we were talking, uh, Ty Carter, and we were talking about what happens when you're in a firefight and a grenade goes off or a grenade launcher or a big concussion. And he says, and you get knocked down. Uh -huh. And he, he says, well, it's kind of like you get up and you're trying to figure out where you're at. It's like when you get up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, you half awake and you're not totally there. He said, and so that's why you take a gun away from a soldier then because they don't know what they're doing because of the concussion. Well, Bill. And let me finish. Yes. And then, so Mitch McConnell had a major concussion. He goes back to work and guess what? One, he's old, so it doesn't recover as fast. 81 years yeah. old. Who knows if he was, didn't, he was low on fluids, if he had a sugar issue or whatever it was, but he obviously froze. And that was the result of some mechanism through, the, I think, through the concussion and age, those combinations, maybe lack of uh, sugar or water or something. And, you know, we all know old people that when their sugar drops or goes too high or if they're dehydrated, they shut down. You're absolutely right. All I know is I get up two o'clock in the morning to go pee. And I could walk in the dark, find the, the you call it the urinal and pee and go back to bed, wash my hands and go back to bed because mm -hmm. I'm old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could do that. So that's the only test I'm dealing with right now. 
listen, I'm all for Mitch McConnell and his health. I want him well. But, you know, I still have an issue with Mitch. I have the issue when Mitch held President Obama's Supreme Court because the Supreme Court is a big deal. When he held his nomination up for eight months saying that, you know, that's why you got to be careful, man, when you do things, saying that eight months time, we're going to have a new president. So it's not fair to the new president for me to allow you, President Obama, to go and select someone now. And then with Donald Trump at the end of his term in eight weeks, Mitch says, we're going to go ahead and push it through. And it's like, Mitch, come on, man. You you <laughs> come on. I mean, come on. Just spit in our face. It's like just because you have the power to do something, you don't always need to do it, in my opinion. Yeah. So, yes, I have all the love in the heart for Mitch McConnell. But at the same time, very still very disappointed, Mitch, because he did something that wasn't right. And he know it wasn't right. And he didn't care. He did it because he could do it. Yep. Speaking of that. In last week's show, I said that Hunter Biden will be convicted and sent to jail. Donald Trump will be convicted and sent to jail. Joe Biden will pardon Donald Trump and Hunter Biden to say it's for the good of the country. All right. So now the the cast has been died. Hunter Biden, they're going after Hunter for the gun charge, violation of the gun charge. Uh, the deal was struck before in June that they thought they had a deal. Then in July, the whole thing fell apart in court, you know, because he was going to plead to a misdemeanor and be two years, two years on probation. That didn't work. That didn't work. So Hunter Biden's in trouble. Hunter Biden's in trouble. How do you feel about Hunter Biden, my friend? He's going to get indicted. Definitely get indicted. How about jail, though? Because people tell me Trump will never spend a day in jail. Hunter Biden will never spend a day in jail. What is it about rich white men, rich black people don't spend any time in jail? Yeah. Well, maybe they're full. <laughs> you know, I don't know if he's going to go to jail. He might serve time. He might serve community service. I don't know. I think your idea that if Trump got convicted and was going to go to jail, I suspect there'd be some kind of backroom deal that if Trump agrees not to run, that he'd get pardoned. And uh, so, I suspect but is that's that justice, justice, though, Bill? I mean, uh, help me. I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, well, I'm asking not... I'm questioning you not like you're in a witness stand, but for better understanding, is that justice for Trump to do all the stuff he's doing? Because he's doing damage in Odell's opinion. Do all the damage you do, President Trump. And at the end of the day, don't worry about it, Brian. You know you're not going to jail. Yeah, it's interesting. If they pardoned him, they're going to put some restrictions on Because when, when Jerry Ford pardoned Richard Nixon, Richard Nixon kind of went away and just you know went in the distance, didn't stir up any trouble or anything. Trump has the capability because he has a he still has a base to stir up trouble. In fact, every proud boy that's been convicted said they came because Trump told them to. So there's power in words. You got to be careful what you say and how you say it. And Trump's never condemned them. Never condemned them. He said, you know, there are good fine people that went up to the Capitol. But Bill, you have the situation in Florida with Mar Lago, and now the guy is flipped and said yes. Here's the evidence and knowing IT people, IT people usually not hardcore thugs. No. You know, IT people not trying to be funny. And I know you owe that. Oh, you bias, prejudice, and stereotypes. Yes, I am on this situation. So look, go ahead, talk about me. But they still ain't going to talk about me as much as they talk about you, Bill. So it's okay. <laughs> but uh, when the IT guy pulls up in the little geek squad Volkswagen, that's not a thug mobile. That's not Snoop Dogg pulling up in, in a crump car, right? Not unless it jumps up and exactly. down. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's the hydraulics bill. The jump up and down is the hydraulics. So the little geek squad guy, IT guy, let's yeah. say that. He's not going to jail for Trump. He's not hard like that. You know, he, it, snitches get, get stitches. That guy's not going to go to jail for Trump. So that's going to be the issue in Florida. And and, and I, I'm finished the point. In Georgia, we know what's going on in Georgia. So that's two things. In the District of Columbia with the Capitol, we know what that's all about. And then in New York, you're dealing with the young lady in the red. It's just so much to say you can just do anything you want to do and we will make a deal with you. And the rest of the people in America look at you and say, that's that two tier justice Odell keep harping about. How do you feel about that? Or in your mind, Odell, that's just the way it is. That's just the way America is. Let's be honest. America is America. And hey, it is what it is. 
the beauty of America, everybody can have an opinion and they don't necessarily get shot and go to jail. So that's the beauty. You know, there's there's a story that Ronald Reagan would talk about. He said, uh, you know, he had a guy come into him and uh, he said, uh, the guy went and he says, I'm going to tell you a story about Gorbachev. He says, I can go, he told Gorbachev, I can go and sit in front of Ronald Reagan and pound my feet and scream and shout and say, Ronald Reagan's doing a terrible job. He said, I can't do that with Gorbachev. Mm-hmm. And Reagan goes, what do you mean you can't do it, Gorbachev? You walk in there, you start screaming and hollering and say, Ronald Reagan's doing a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> and Gorbachev's going to say, you're right. <laughs> you know what, man? I, I think it's on this, Bill. I think it's about money, people with power. You know, it's a new law that's just come, not a new law, excuse me. It's proposed new law, Department of Labor, and you're a business owner, says they're looking at eligibility for overtime people close to 3.6 million for those who are on salary. You know, think about it. The proposed rule would require employers, and now this, of course, people doing half a million dollar annually or more, to provide overtime pay to salary workers who earn less than $1,059 a week or around $55,000 a year. The current overtime threshold is $35,568. The Labor Department is responsible for setting the threshold that requires employees to pay out overtime. What do you think, school teachers, what do you think if folks have to get paid overtime who on salary, who makes more than $35,568? Interesting. You look at the school teachers and the administrators and the... uh, what they call classified people. That's, you know, the people that make the lunch and the janitors and the maintenance people. You know, as I was talking to them, they were talking about the one fellow came and he said uh, how much he was making an hour. He says, he said, uh, I got to work two jobs. Got three kids, wife works. So I leave here and I go work at Dollar General and I make more at Dollar General than I do here. For the school system. Yeah. And this is a full-time person, not part-time. Like, you full-time, don't know. Full-time. And more per hour per hour. Wow. You know, that's that's sickening. I mean, all jokes aside, Bill, and I'm not trying to be funny, but think about that. This person has helped educate our students. It may not be an educator, Mm -hmm. but you let that air conditioner not work and you let the maintenance people see that's one of the problems in America. We think that if someone who does work with their hands, they're less than someone who works in an office, blue collar versus white collar. But let me be quiet because obviously I'm on a soapbox right now. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I asked him, I said, then why do you keep doing it? Why do you keep doing it? And he goes, because I know it's the right thing for the kids. So the maintenance people and the school teachers and the administrators and the janitors are doing it for the kids. I'm on the school board. I'm doing it for the kids, mm. just like they are. And wow. you know, I don't make $15 an hour. I make a lot less being on the school board. And I didn't, wow. I didn't do it for the money, quite wow. frankly, but they're doing it for the kids. I need to do it for the kids. And all this rhetoric that I hear out there, that's not for the kids. That's for these guys to think they're important people. They are not important people. They're little people. If they were big people, they would come and talk to me and have a cup of coffee. Wow. Whoa. Gobo, gobble, gobble, whatever they say, <laughs> tell me how you really feel. You know, sometimes small minded people rise to big jobs. However, it's hard trying to be big when small got you. Mm-hmm. Mr. Goble, talk about the kids. As we turn the corner toward close, I'm hearing some good thing about the Youth Resilience Summit. Oh, man. November the 16th, 2023. Tell us a little bit about that. Jim Alrighetto, and always, Jim, I, I apologize. I always mispronounce your name. It's a tongue twister for me, but Jim is our executive director. And he is, but he's not better looking than me, right? No, he's not a black guy, is he? No. Okay. Right. And he's uh, he has put together this this program that uh, is uh, quite frankly by himself. He's he's raising the money. Wow. And uh, he's got as our program co chairs uh, Sharon Hurst, president and CEO of Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina. We got to get her on the show again. Lonnie Poole, a billionaire, Boy Scout friend. Okay. Tony Campano. Chief Operating Officer of the YMCA in the Triangle, Tammy Simmons, 
Executive Vice President of Machine, Machine Specialties, which makes parts for SpaceX and the federal government military. Wow. It's going to be November 16th at the McKinnon Conference Center in Raleigh. It's going to be starting at 8.30 and go to 1.30. We serve you lunch. And let me give you some of the subjects that they're going to cover. We're going to have an unbelievable speaker. Our, our keynote speaker is going to be a district attorney, Ben David. If you want to listen to him, he's got a TED Talk. Uh-huh. Under It's phenomenal. Chief Justice Paul Newby is greeting us with his Resilience Summit participants and adverse childhood experience that he's doing with the courts. So he's going to talk to it. But but then we're going to do trauma-informed leadership, suicide prevention, mental health awareness of our youth, leveraging disability law for our youth, how connections matter. That means working together. Ident- he may wear to get some Republicans in there. Identify youth going down the wrong path, internet crimes, and social impact. Now, you're coming to this. Last time you were the last speaker, you did a great job. Well, you know what? Words. First, I thank you for the compliment. I enjoy speaking. I've been told I'm good at it. But at the same time, Bill, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But words can help me. And I think when you have a platform and opportunity to speak, it'd be great if what you can do is be positive Amen. and help others. Yep. Because right now, the school board meeting on the 19th. Oh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be wide open. Jiffy Pop popcorn. You so, hey, look, but, look out for but, the good looking black guy. I would say in the back, but you know, we got an issue with this back of the bus <laughs> backstop. So in the front to the right yeah, corner. Yeah. When you smell popcorn, it won't be burnt popcorn, <laughs> Jiffy Pop popcorn, that'd be Odell sitting over there saying, okay, if this is about entertainment, let the games begin. It, it will be entertainment, and it's called uh, Buckle Up Buttercup. Buckle Up Buttercup. All right. Find Bill and Odell online at thecommonground.show. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group, all rights reserved. This podcast is brought to you by Yes Weekly, the triad's largest circulated and best read weekly magazine. You can also find us online at yesweekly.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes Weekly, your trusted news leader for local arts, entertainment, music, food, and more for nearly 18 years. Whether you're a big, medium, or small business, managing and growing the bottom line is important. Focus CFO brings the experience and financial acumen of a Fortune 100 chief financial officer to your company at a fraction of the cost. PNL help, internal reporting processes, or any business transitions or events. Focus CFO will help you and your team have a CFO in your company's back pocket. Focus CFO. Learn more at focuscfo.com.